Hello everyone, RJM3 here. Just last month in October, the channel had finally reached 200 subscribers, and I want to thank all of you for helping me reach this milestone. And despite questionable upload frequency, more and more people keep wanting to watch my videos, so I must be doing something right. Anyway, I announced back in July that I'd be having a Q&A this October, and on October 13th, I uploaded this Q&A's announcement video where I gave you all one week to submit one or two questions about me, the channel, and my take on historical and current events in the comment section. I was able to get a handful of responses, and now that I have your questions, it's time for me to give my answers. Our first questions are from Xavier Lauzak, and greetings to you too. His first question is, what countries do you hope to visit? I definitely want to visit Europe someday. The three countries I want to visit in particular are the UK, Italy, and Germany. Xavier's second question is, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie of all time is Jurassic Park. I've always loved that movie since I was little. As a kid, I was fascinated by the dinosaurs, and I just love the heck out of that movie. It even inspired my love of Jeeps, you know, because I, I liked the way they looked in the movie, and that's why the first car I, I have is a Jeep Wrangler. Whoa, whoa asks, do you know Lizzie the Rat Cycle 15? No, never heard of him. Boom underscore 66 asks, what are your thoughts on World War I? Anyone who's been on this channel long enough knows I have some rather spicy opinions about the Great War and how the world would be better off if the Central Powers won it. But aside from that, I believe World War I was the most significant conflict of the past few centuries. It completely altered the, the geopolitical landscape because it set in motion the ongoing decline of Western civilization. World War I rocked Europe and partially weakened the European powers, but then the consequences of World War I led to World War II, which completely devastated Europe. Europe was forced to decolonize, and the people of Europe became disillusioned with the ideas of nationalism and embraced globalism which can be seen in the creation of the EU and in the behavior of certain European politicians today. The powers of Europe became militarily weak, and because of that, the United States, the only Western power left unravaged by the world wars, was left to safeguard the free world and Western civilization all by itself. So if anything happens to the United States, like a civil war or something, uh, it, w it would be like the fall of Rome. Western civilization would just collapse, and yeah. Nerd104 asks, how fast can you flip? I'm sorry, but I can't flip. I'm not exactly the athletic type. Nerd104 also asks, what is your next alternative history going to be about? I already have the first three episodes of What If Second Season planned out right here. But I can't tell you what those scenarios are just yet. But I will tell you that they all involve a major country in the Far East. I look forward to seeing all your theories and speculation in the comments. Garrett Allen asks, how does leadership affect geography? Well, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, but I have to say that in the past, states with more ambitious and effective leadership tend to have a lot more territory or a larger sphere of influence, such as the Romans, the Mongols, the British, the United States, and China. On the other hand, nations like Switzerland and San Marino have historically been pretty passive and content and so have not attempted to invade their neighbors, spread their influence or their territory, or make allies. Garrett Allen also asks, what are your thoughts on the current geopolitical trends with China? To be blunt, the People's Republic of China is evil. They're essentially the Nazi Germany of the 21st century. The PRC has long since taken away the basic human rights of the Chinese people. The Chinese Communist Party is committing genocide against the Uyghurs and the Tibetans. The Chinese Navy is hijacking the South China Sea. China is using the Belt and Road Initiative to bring Africa into its debt. And most dangerously, China is using its mighty economic influence to censor people, companies, and organizations all around the world outside of their own borders. Overall, China is setting itself up to usurp the United States of America as the world's sole hegemon. China putting an end to Hong Kong's autonomy is no different than when Hitler's Germany reoccupied the Rhinelands back in 1936. It is their first major step towards world domination. The Chinese have marched into their Rhineland. 
Now that Hong Kong is finished, their next target is most likely Taiwan. Now, you may think that because the United States is guaranteeing Taiwanese independence, a Chinese invasion of Taiwan can never succeed. But here's the thing. China doesn't need to invade Taiwan to annex it. The KMT party in Taiwan is now in the PRC's pocket. All they have to do is win an election, and Taiwan could willingly agree to be annexed by China. It'll be like how Austria's fascist government agreed to be annexed by Germany in 1938. It'll be the Anschluss all over again. And if the world doesn't do something about China soon, eventually it'll be too late. Migdrum 07's first question is, where were you born and where do you live? I was born and raised in the good old US of A in the fine state of Connecticut. Migdrum 07's second question is, do you play any strategy games? And if not, would you like to? From mid-2019 to early 2020, I occasionally played some Hearts of Iron 4, the base game, and Kaiserreich. Though unfortunately, I was forced to stop playing because the game was too much pressure for my laptop. And so I've been thinking about getting a more heavy-duty computer that can handle Hoi 4 at some point in the future. California asks, what got you into history? The furthest back I can remember having an interest in history was in fifth grade in either 2012 or 2013. And we were learning about the American Revolution, and I just enjoyed it. As I progressed through middle, middle school, I began learning about all kinds of history, like Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, Rome, the medieval era, the Industrial Revolution, the World Wars, the Cold War, etc. And finally, California asks for my opinions on the Pig War. If the Pig War had escalated into an actual war between America and Britain in 1859, it either would have gone very well for the United States or very terrible for the United States. The prospect of a war with the British Empire could revive national unity in the U.S. and prevent the Confederate States from seceding in the following year and delay the American Civil War until a future point where the South's power was even weaker than it already had been in 1860, and the U.S. could even capture Canada. However, if the South secedes regardless, then the U.S. would have to fight a two-front war with Britain and the Confederacy. And those were all the questions you guys submitted. Thank you all for your participation. Before I end this video, I have a few announcements to make about some upcoming videos. First off, back in July, I promised you all this month I would be uploading a video called Debunking Communist Historical Revision, where I'd go on r slash communism and debunk all their lies about Russian history. However, not only has that video been proven to be much larger and far more complicated to produce, but college has been giving me a lot of work and I haven't been able to focus on YouTube so much. So for the sake of this channel, my college career, and my sanity, debunking communist historical revision will be delayed until 2021. However, I do have another project in the works coming out this month that I think you'll all enjoy. As for What If Season 2, that will still be coming out this winter as scheduled. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. This has been RJM3, Alternate Historian. Have a nice day.